Okay, if you remember, because uh, it just was a few seconds ago, I said, oh, I'm going to do the super scopey later and sculpt those. Well, you know, I change my mind all the time. So this is still not t quite tacky, but still drying. So I, I can't really paint on it, but what I can do is figure out the parts I need to make for this because we had a couple of missing parts. Now, one of them was, if you remember, let me see if I can pop this off of the wire. I don't need that wire anymore. This goes right into here. As far as it goes in, we may never know. We'll see as it goes in that far, let's say. Okay, I'm missing something right here. This is, it just doesn't look right. It's also going to fall over. So I need to create something that is going to be a little wedged block here and then maybe make it look like there's a strap going up over it with like a screw on each side. And that just makes it look like it, it's supposed to be there. Uh, I could also extend out something from here. I could leave this alone. I think I'm going to leave it open there. I'd already got an indentation, so I'm not going to make anything inside there. I'll just black that out and, uh, and then just have that little strap. The other thing we had to fabricate was missing rivets. That one's missing, that one's missing. That one fell out, but I found it. And then that one's missing, that one's missing. So we're going to make a couple of rivets, and I'll show you how to do that. And we're using Super Sculpey. Now, those of you don't know what this is, you can get it at any hobby store. Super Sculpey. They have different colors, white, flesh tone, gray. Gray works for this one. You want to put it in a Ziploc when you're done. They used to come with like a little, little box, but now that they got a that you could you could seal. Now it's got a. Um, hmm. They used to also snap apart real easily. Well, like maybe maybe this is East Coast Super Sculpey. So cut that and see if I can peel that off. There we go. Peel off a nice chunk. We'll worry about the rest of that later. And it's just like clay time, you know. I'm going to go ahead and get this nice and warm with my hands. And then what you do, you just sculpt it however you want. Take as much time as you like to do it. When you're done, you put it in the oven, and I believe this is uh, like at three something, like 300 and some odd degrees, or 385. Ah, 375 degrees for like 15 minutes, and then it's hard, hardens up, no big deal. And you can paint it, glue it, whatever, you can drill and tap it, pretty tough stuff. I'm going to peel off a little bit of this and make it into some balls. And I'll show you what I'm doing the balls, because if you think about it, all a ball is half a rivet. So we're going to make a little, not quite a ball, but more like a tube with rounded ends. That'll make it for a nice rivet, and just kind of comparing it to the one I have here. Needs to be a little bit bigger. How's that look? That's close. Make it too thin, just kind of squish it. And then take my exacto blade, cut about that much off right there. And then rivets had a little hole in the middle, didn't they? Well, put that right like that. Kind of smash a little bit and then put, using the back side of this airbrush needle, bingo, one little rivet ready to go. Let me arch it a little bit better. Get the hole a little bit bigger. Wallow it out a bit. That looks better. Okay, one rivet. And then basically I've got four to go, or uh, three to go on those. You've seen one rivet, you've seen them all. We'll do, I'll do the rest of them off camera. Let's make that little block piece that's going to be underneath the front. Now I've done this stuff on everything from frames, all the little design stuff I do on, the, on my Disney frames. I do little skulls or little uh, lanterns or pirate ship stuff around the, and I, I make it all out of Sculpey. It's kind of fun. Now some people really like the catalyzed version, that you basically um, mix it and then it has a certain amount of time to harden. It's like, ah, oh, I'd I, I rather have something I can I can use, and then it doesn't really just go bad on me. I'm going to cut this flat right there, and then I'm going to use this to kind of contour it a little bit. Give me a little bit of a contour. There we go. Here's the contour for that base, and it's going to have to sit 
on top of that, let's make it, we'll clean it up a little bit. Shorten it up. Now after you've made this, and let's say it's a little bit off from what you wanted, you can always come in and sand it and grind it. It's very malleable. See, by cutting, it instantly gives it that more of that machine look right there. See that? And then we're going to have this piece is going to be sitting kind of there. And this is going to be, well, sitting right about like that. I mean, it's going to be a little bit lower. I'll cut the bottom off of it. But um, yeah, pretty cool. I'm happy with that. Just need to make it a little bit shorter. I don't want to squish my rivet. That'd be a tragedy. Okay, made a little bit shorter, kind of eyeballed that. Now, I also need to create my strap. I'll show you what that is. Take this piece here. That's going to be the part that goes up and over the barrel, holds it down. And once you get it, that you want to flatten it down, get it to the right thickness. Um, I need a rolling pin. How perfect. <laughs> Use the barrel of your gun to... It's like Scopey for the NRA. Cool. And if you can see that, the way it is right there, I'm going to come in and use my stick as a ruler. Cast this off to one side. Oh, uh, what do you know? Pretty dang close. Not exact. Close enough. I want the, the strap to be a little bit narrower than that. And the strap's going to go on the outside. And then you put the barrel in here, and then the strap's going to go around like that. Make it loose enough I can get the barrel out. Cut that. And plan on making a couple more rivets because we're going to have a rivet on, I'm going to keep that in there, put this underneath to give it the same height. I'm going to keep that in there and I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take this rivet. I'm going to do, I'm going to press all the way through here into that. Now, the reason I'm doing that, it goes all the way through and it kind of holds a rivet there without me having to really mold it in. Now, it might pop off later, but we have a hole going through, we can glue. So it's pretty easy. The other side, um, I'm not going to have a, uh, I think what I'm going to do on the other side is I'll make just like a little a circular thing, like it's a, a stud going through, and this is just the flat head on it. So we're going to make it look like it's a screw head. There we go. Screw head. And that goes on the back side. Right there. Now I will come in and using my X-Acto blade, I'll smooth the scopey in together a little bit. When heated, it'll, it'll kind of adhere to itself, but you want to kind of help it by doing a little smoothie, a little smoothie action right there. You could add texture, some other things to it here and there. There's interesting stuff you can do. We're not going to do that right now. I might, 
Oh, what should we do? What could we do? All right, I got this. Let's go ahead and make something that doesn't really mean anything, but looks cool. There we go. That has some insignificance. I don't know what it is, but it, it looks like it's supposed to be there. It looks important. There we go. And then I can slowly, don't want to miss one. If your Scopey gets really, really warm, you know what you do? And what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. And when it gets hard enough, I can pull it off without mutilating it. So um, let me get that off. When we come back, we'll be, like I said, this is actually kind of cool. This is the way it's going to look. I mean, it's going to be stuck down a little bit more, and then I'll shave the bottom with the file later. It's always better to have it too long than too short, but there's our, our bracket that we just made for our gun. You know, and I can slide it anywhere I want once I take it off and glue it in that position. That's where that's going to be. So there you go, Scopey 101. I love this stuff, very much fun. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up my rivets, put this in the fridge, and then we're going to throw them in the oven, and by then we'll be coming back to paint this. Okay, got a couple of uh, areas masked off for me to paint on here. Uh, just a real simple one here. I just wanted to keep this area silver and just hit the, the, the shaft around here a little bit darker with the black. And I'll also come in and a little flick trick using the micron. Maybe darken this area in here, make it this solid black. Now this is candy black, by the way, so it's not going to be completely solid. And then these, I've actually masked off the rivets as best I could, and that way I can hit all the way around them. Now some of them I didn't because they're just too small for me to get in there and mask. I don't really mind if they're dark, but I'm going to hit these rivets. Area underneath it, some black, and this is candy black, of course. And then the grip itself, I'm going to just hit the whole thing with black. Except I mass off the trigger area so it'll stand out being silver. This one wanted to stay black, and I'll put some texture in it with some, uh, like some sepia or something later. Make it look dirty, some brown. Now he's probably thinking, you already made that silver and I'm making it black again. Yeah, but it's not going to really be completely, it'll have a little bit of metallic because this is the candy, so it'll show through. A little bit, especially when it's cleared. I'm going to hit this area here, make this area on the inside a little bit darker, just to show a transition. Now the cool part is this, this is kind of a fun part here. Um, what I did is I cut out a piece of, because these areas I want to be darker inside than outside, and uh, that can be difficult to do. So I made a little stencil. I laid a piece of tape on it and I pressed it so I could see the indentation. I laid it on, them, on there real not, lightly like this and then I can hit it from the top down, top, down, top, down. And then when I unmask that, See how it's nice and sprayed. I, and because it's the same exact design, you know, over and over again on this, I just lay it on the next one. And I keep on doing it, just trying to make sure I keep this stencil nice. It didn't take me very long to cut it. It was pretty fast. I'll put it like this so you can see it better. Continue this all the way around the gun. Mm. 
Yeah. Give them some nice sense of depth in there. And it's a lot faster than painting each individual one. And so they'll say, oh, you can always computer cut out little masks and put them in there and spray the silver later. Like, yeah, yeah, this, is, this was pretty fast. This took me like maybe not even a minute to cut all these out. So I, I love my computer. I love masking, plotting, that kind of stuff. But only when it saves me time, not when it actually takes extra time. I don't love my computer that much. I do this last one down here, which is tough to get to because it's kind of at an angle. So it may not be perfect, but guess what? It's inside an area I'm going to hit with black anyway because it's in shadow, so I'm not worried about how messed up it is. Pretty cool, huh? And that's really, think about it, it's pretty quick on, on doing those slots. And then the last one, I'm not concerned about keeping this thing in good shape. It's the last time I have to use it. Make sure it's the last time. It really sucks when you wad up something and you're like, oh crap, I could have used it again. I kind of like that. Now, if I want to, I could actually, you could just add two of these, and I could just paint it, and honestly, from a distance, it'll look exactly the same if I put that back here. I'm not going to do that, because that's not what's on the gun, but it, you, know, you, you start thinking, hey, I'm going to let this cool stencil go to waste. I can do something else with it, so I'll put them down here. I might use them later. Now each of these areas where the new rivets are going, I'm going to hit black on it too, so when I put the rivet in, it'll already be silver. I'll paint that rivet silver when it comes out of the oven. These rivets I'll just have to repaint. They're, they're small enough, I don't mind. Uh, what else am I going to paint in here? I think I'm going to paint inside this gap. Just freehand it. Don't need mask on that. But I want to create separations. There's all these great lines, but the silver, it, it, if it's all monochromatic, it just kind of covers everything up. I don't want that. Get a little shadowing underneath these pieces. This area in here is in shadow anyway, so I'm going to kind of hit it. Let's give a little bit of a burned edge to the end of this gun. And let's also come from the inside of this slot here. See these slots? Start in there and come out. Blend it. Just freehand it. If a little bit gets oversprayed on there, it'll look like a natural, like a natural smoke burn. Just so try to take on some extra character. Is there anything else I need to do? Let's look at this guy. Let's just add some discoloration around some edges. Just for character, not much. Let's see about that stippling. Stippling's not working. I think I got too much dried paint on here. Let's use a sponge out here because I ran out of paper towels. I think they're over there. And I'll pull the trigger back, use that sponge to clean it. So the needle's pulled back, and then stab the sponge of the needle, let the sponge clean the needle. There we go. All better. See? And we're going to hit.
hit the whole thing with some stipple, the black stipple. Let me see if I wipe that off. Here we go. Yeah, be careful on getting gigantic black stipples. Stippling looks good until it's a big black dot and it looks like you spilled paint on your gun. Shadow underneath here a little bit. Shadow around here, because that'll it'll be like some smoke around that. We're also going to come in and use uh, some sepia tones on this. I think I mentioned that earlier. More stippling. And the stippling is going to be done with sepia and, uh, well I shouldn't say sepia, I'm going to use de decay and a little bit of, uh, of dirt track brown. So. Okay, I like that. This guy needs a little love. just so it matches everybody else. Let's pull this out. that end, black this end a little bit, and I believe we are good to go. Let's, let's unmask these little rivets, see how different they look. Unmask, we've got those rivets, yeah, those silver rivets will pop out nicely. I'll have to paint the ones on the back side, because like an idiot, I forgot to mask them. But uh, let's go ahead and unmask the rest of the gun, see how it looks. If we get some overspray and some masking and some weird areas we weren't planning, eh, bonus texture. There you go, looks pretty cool. Off my fingers. Let's pull the trigger masking off. Yeah. That trigger pops out nicely. And all the rest of the rivets. Unmasked. Unmasked. And I'll still touch them up with a little bit of silver to make them pop better. That's about it. That's all the unmasking. Last rivet. Let this sit for a little bit. I'm gonna go check on our, see if our parts are done cooking, and then uh, get those silver. And if I need to do any more silver on this, I will. And uh, a little bit of sepia tone uh, using the either some decay or some uh, some uh, dirt track brown candy, and and we're good to go. It'll be all done, and all it needs to be done is uh, finished is to assemble it, and uh, or have a, actually Chris is gonna. Uh, Matt clear it, and then uh, I'll have him assemble it, so he gets all the fun. <laughs> all right, we're going. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you something kind of cool. I've got a little bit of a uh, fine aluminum Kratex mixed up with uh, probably 10% of the Quicksilver and some 4050 for uh, adhesion, and I use that to brush on some of these rivets that I, uh, that, that weren't as dark as, or light as they could be. I left a couple open so you can see. I'm gonna come in and just brush the top of that rivet with that silver mixture, it comes out real nice. Right in there. It's too tough to go in and mask those off. 
And, uh, and then another thing would be kind of cool to do, and I'll show you, is because of how nice this silver works on this for the brush, I'm going to come in with the, um, my black. Again, where is it? Here it is. This is my black. And this area didn't have enough, in my opinion, enough body. I want it to have a little bit of a... So I'm going to spray some black there. I meant body, I meant depth. Spray some black there. Then I come back in with the silver and just dab it right on the rivet. Kind of makes that area pop out better. But you create are called implied details. Very few things are viewed super, super up close, like for cosplay or even movies, but you want things to look good from a distance. Now, I've got some black here, same black candy, I'm going to use to bring back the center of the rivet, because the center got some silver in it. And we want to show that little hole in the middle of the rivet, and all the rivets have that. So before I go on to my next step, which is the sepia and that tone, you know, that kind of dirt look I'm going to get. Oop, I forgot to silver that rivet. You always find something you missed. You know, using that decay and the candy dirt track brown, I'm going to do these. Since I have the brush out and I have the paint out, might as well do it. It's also a good way for you to figure out if you missed any rivets, like I just found out. You'll like go over the whole gun and you're like, oh, okay, I got everything. And you go back to paint something and you're like, how did I miss that? Happens. Happens to everybody. And then the last rivets here, this little dot in the middle. Actually, those are still wet, so i get that guy. He's doing okay. Yeah, now you look at anything else I need some black on, since I got black on the brush. No, not really. I might, if I want to, I could always come in and detail some of these. You know, bring in a little line right in the inside of that. You'll make it pop out better. You can't see from a distance. Just add a line there. Whatever this look, it's a safety or something right here, I assume. See, that makes that little, you just outline something so it can be seen from a distance. Very similar to the way makeup is done on stage where the accent, the features. So up close, it looks kind of like, wow, what the heck is going on there? But then from a distance, it reads. So that little shadow right there from a distance makes it read kind of nice. Anything else I could do with this block? So I guarantee as soon as I clean this brush, it'll be like, oh no, no, you forgot this one. Here. I'm gonna get this one rivet that I forgot before I put the brush away. Right there, that little sucker. He's kind of dirty, his rivet's got a lot of a lot of 3D print material on it. That's it. Alright, good to go. Okay. Now, oops. Never lay your airbrushes on their side. Oh, it's all gone. I'll clean that up in a second. It's always easier. It's like, this is Chris's table. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. You can come and make a mistake at my shop next time. No, oh, I'm not going to. I'll clean it up, Chris. I'll clean it up. He's at home right now. Is that, we're filming on Sunday. So Chris Harpin's at home. But as soon as I spilt that, He's like playing with his sons. He all of a sudden he's like. He <laughs> I sense, I sense uncleanliness. <laughs> There's a disturbance in the force. Oh. We love you, Chris. But you really gotta clean this workstation up. This place is filthy. I mean, just paint poured all over the place. Uh, I can't work in these conditions, Chris.